Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. So today I want to sit down and I want to talk about a more serious topic. This is something that has been really close to my heart and it's been on my mind a lot right now. And I just feel like it's relevant to my channel and it, it's something that I think I need to share with you guys. So I want to talk about the way that Hobby Lobby has been treating their employees, public safety, and why I will no longer be supporting them in any way, shape, or form. So I want to start with just like an overview of Hobby Lobby and the various controversies they've been embroiled in over the years because they have had quite a few issues and backlash in the past. So Hobby Lobby, if you don't know, is an arts and crafts store. They opened in 1972 uh, and they were founded by David Green, who is still the CEO of Hobby Lobby today. So in 2018, Hobby Lobby did $8 billion in revenue and they had a total of 37,500 employees. Also, as of 2018, they had over 800 locations nationwide. They are also known to be a company that has religious values, and they do close on Sundays to allow their employees time to worship and rest. The company leadership has stated that these corporate policies are directly advised by God. So throughout the years, Hobby Lobby has had multiple controversies. The first one that I could kind of find was in 2009. And this one, I think, is actually a little bit less known than some of their other controversies. But they were involved in an almost decade long scandal. Actually, I think a little over a decade related to their participation in smuggling ancient artifacts. So in 2009, representatives of Hobby Lobby purchased $1.6 million dollars of Iraqi artifacts. These artifacts were supposed to be for the Museum of the Bible, which is funded by the Green family. These included clay bula, which is a type of inscribed clay. It's frequently hollow and ball shaped, and they could contain like other small tokens for identification. And there were also tablets with cuneiform script. So these artifacts were purchased from dealers in the United Arab Emirates, and they were claimed on declarations as ceramic and clay tile samples. These declarations also falsely stated that the objects were from Turkey and Israel, and this ended up leading to an investigation by the U.S. government. So many of these artifacts had no evidence of their history or their ownership, and this led to suspicions that the artifacts might have been looted or sold via the black market. So a press release from the Justice Department relating to this matter reads, quote, in October 2010, an expert on cultural property law retained by Hobby Lobby warned the company that the acquisition of cultural property likely from Iraq, including cuneiform tablets and cylinder seals, carries a risk that such objects may have been looted from archaeological sites in Iraq. The expert also advised Hobby Lobby to review its collection of antiquities for any objects of Iraqi origin and to verify that their country of origin was properly declared at the time of importation into the United States. The export warned Hobby Lobby that an improper declaration of country of origin for cultural property could lead to seizure and forfeiture of the artifacts by CBP, end quote. All of these actions led to a settlement in July of 2017, where Hobby Lobby did consent to the forfeiture and return of over 5,500 artifacts, as well as a fine for $3 million. Five antiquity dealers were also arrested by the Israeli police in connection with Hobby Lobby's illegal importation of these ancient artifacts. Then in 2012, what I think is the most famous Hobby Lobby controversy to date was the decision of the CEO, David Green, to come forth with a public opposition to the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. So the specific issue that was related to the ACA um, was related to a provision that mandated that companies provide access to the morning after pill, as well as some requirements that covered birth control. Uh, and kind of contraception in general. So in response to this, Hobby Lobby filed a lawsuit against the United States. In a statement released by the company, they said, quote, the Green family's religious beliefs forbid them from participating in, providing access to, paying for, training others to engage in, or otherwise supporting abortion-causing drugs and devices, end quote. 
The company made the argument that the provision that required companies to provide access to emergency contraceptives violated their First Amendment rights, which protect religious beliefs. They argued that this then barred the application of the contraceptive mandate to them. However, this injunction was rejected by the U.S. Supreme Court, in response to which Hobby Lobby then sued the federal government. And in July of 2013, U.S. District Judge Joe Heaton granted a temporary exemption from the mandate. Responses to this decision included some serious backlash and public outrage, as well as praise from the more pro-life activists. So while I don't normally talk about politics on my channel, I do think that it's really important to cover all the specific issues that Hobby Lobby has had in the public eye, regardless of if they're more politicized than others. Um, this was a huge issue in the public sphere, regardless of your, what side you're on, and it created passionate arguments on all sides. So I think that's like the definition of controversy, right? So... In response to this, the Center for Inquiry, who is a nonprofit advocacy organization whose mission is to, quote, foster a secular society based on reason, science, freedom of inquiry, and humanist values, end quote, argued that if Hobby Lobby was granted an exclusion, that this would violate both the First Amendment and the Establishment Cause, which states explicitly that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, end quote. So they're both kind of arguing the same thing, that it's going to violate their freedom of religion. And in 2014, a very close vote by the U.S. Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four that Hobby Lobby and other closely held stock corporations can be exempt from the law based on their religious preferences. The Supreme Court cited the Religious Freedom Restoration Act as their basis for this decision, which ensures that interests in religious freedom are protected, and they did not state the First Amendment for the basis on this. So... After I've covered like the kind of two big controversies they've been involved in before this, I'm going to get to the reason why I am making this video. Um, but before I do that, I need to take some personal accountability for my own decisions, my own choices, and my own actions. While I wasn't aware of the details of all of these scandals, I was aware to an extent the choices that they had made in the past. For various reasons, partially relating to my desire to review like all supplies for you guys, especially kind of like home brands because they're more affordable, but also for selfish reasons, I continue to shop at Hobby Lobby, even though it was antithetical to my personal values and it was honestly hypocritical of me. I can't change the past or that I chose to support Hobby Lobby in the past despite my kind of personal reservations, but I can change the future. And I cannot go forward supporting Hobby Lobby and continuing to promote them on my channel. I have a responsibility to you guys, to my followers, and honestly, my own sense of morals and my own like beliefs as a human to no longer support a company that is putting people's lives at risk because this is no longer a political thing. It's no longer, you know, an illegal smuggling thing. This is them willfully risking the lives of their employees and other people. So in 2020, as you know, uh, we were hit by COVID-19. I don't think I really need to go into what's happening with the actual virus. We are living it and we all know, we've all seen the news. You know, it's, it's huge. Um, thousands of people are dying. Hundreds of thousands of people are being infected. It is spreading like crazy and it's a really scary, it's a really scary time, especially for people who are immunocompromised, who are in the high risk area, who are elderly and all the people that love those people. Um, so I want to talk about something that is, in my opinion, the actually worst controversy that they have been embroiled in. And as I said, it's something that I can't stand for because they're risking human lives. So in March, this global pandemic began to hit the U.S. really hard after sweeping through China and Europe. 
Businesses were closing globally and citizens across the world were told to self-isolate um, or shelter in place. And honestly, the majority of us are still under these orders. We're staying home. We're self-isolating. A lot of us are in places where non-essential businesses have closed. So things are pretty serious right now. While non-essential stores began to close voluntarily, Hobby Lobby remained open. CEO and founder David Green stated in a letter to employees that this decision was, quote, informed by a message from God bestowed upon his wife, Barbara Green. End quote. As more and more restrictions were put into place regarding essential businesses and more states started mandating stay-at-home orders, many other stores began to switch to curbside pickup, delivery, and other options to stay in business while respecting social distancing. Hobby Lobby stayed open. When pressured, they finally stated to their employees on Monday, March 23rd, that the stores would be closing and employees would be laid off. Not more than a few days later, stores quietly reopened, including nearly all of its Wisconsin and Ohio stores, which were all under stay-at-home mandates. Staff who had been told just a couple of days ago that they were laid off were then told to come in as scheduled, and managers were giving talking points for, quote, how to respond and communicate if visited by a local authority that asks why we're open, end quote. Another leaked memo stated that the company is, quote, going to make every effort to continue working the employees, end quote. Employees requesting anonymity and my own personal hearsay that I have heard have stated multiple times that they fear retribution for speaking out about this. One employee stated, quote, I used to love working for this company, but since this pandemic, I've seen how callous and irresponsible it has been, end quote. Another stated, quote, I don't want to stay home because I'm too lazy to work. I want to stay home to do my part to stop the spread of the virus, end quote. One employee in North Carolina was told that her team was not allowed to wear gloves or masks as it could make customers uncomfortable. Many of these stores were opening in states with stay-at-home orders requiring the closure of non-essential stores. Under the guidelines issued by the Department of Homeland Security, retailers specializing in the sale of craft supplies are not considered essential businesses. Photos have surfaced of signs at various Hobby Lobby stores claiming it is an essential business for homeschooling supplies and materials for making protective equipment. The fact of the matter is, none of these supplies require the physical store to be open and can easily be delivered. In addition, employees have also stated that the warehouses have been closed, meaning stores aren't even able to restock this so-called essential inventory. In defiance of these executive stay-at-home orders, Hobby Lobby in in multiple states, including my local Hobby Lobby here in Colorado Springs, stayed open. And it wasn't until exposés and newspaper articles began circulating that brought attention to this issue that people began paying attention, that they started doing something. Governments and officials began to pay attention and cease and desists were issued. Multiple stores began to be mandatorily closed by the authorities after refusing to comply. So on Friday, April 3rd, Hobby Lobby announced that it would be closing all of its stores, acquiescing to the public backlash. The majority of its employees are being furloughed without pay. In addition to this, emergency pay and paid time off benefits will be ended. Employees will, however, have medical, dental, life, and long-term disability benefits while furloughed through at least May 1st. One employee was quoted as saying that their manager stated to them upon the closure that, quote, the employees got what the employees wanted. The stores were closed, end quote. I should have stopped supporting this company years ago, but their willful choice to put not only their employees, but also their customers in grave danger in order to support their bottom line is disgusting. 
we have seen so many amazing stories of amazing companies coming out and supporting their employees, like the Texas Roadhouse CEO, who has surrendered his salary to his employees, not just for a few months, but through January 7th, 2021. That is how a quality company treats its employees. While I understand that not every company has the capital or the ability to support all its employees while not open, and I do understand that art and craft supplies help keep us sane, there is absolutely no excuse for Hobby Lobby's actions. Both their complete lack of communication with their staff and their willful defiance of executive orders that are put in place to protect our communities only serves to make people take this less seriously. They are putting people in severe danger. This is not political at this point. It is life or death, and I will not stand for it. As I said, for the future of my channel, I will no longer be promoting, using, or mentioning Hobby Lobby. I do have some previous videos filmed using Hobby Lobby supplies. For the Hobby Lobby home brands, I will not be uploading those videos. For supplies that were purchased there but are not their home brands, I will mention other places to purchase them and I will not be talking about Hobby Lobby or recommending them as a place to purchase them. I do have a video coming up that I filmed with my mother and my grandmother that does take place in Hobby Lobby for part of it where they purchase some supplies. That video is really special to me, so I am going to still be uploading that, but I'm going to exclude any references to the store, and if I see any signs, I'm going to try to blur them out. So while I can't tell you what to do, I really hope that you choose to support other art stores. I know that not everyone can afford to shop at local art stores, and if you can, that is amazing. But if your only option is a chain or online, I urge you to please look at stores other than Hobby Lobby. There are so many amazing stores out there, both chains and locally owned, that you can shop at. I'm personally a big fan of Jerry's Artorama as well as Dick Blick. For local companies, I can't suggest too much, but if you do live in Colorado, I cannot recommend Mininger's enough. They are such a great locally owned company and uh, their stores are just amazing to go into. So I encourage you to do some research into other options in your area and to join me in saying no to a company that risks the lives of others. Thank you so much for listening to this. I know this is a lot more of a serious topic than my channel normally talks about, but I really do feel like I have an obligation to speak about this on my channel. This is something that's directly related to my area and to my viewers, and I really want to be honest with you about the things that I really feel like this is not okay, and I cannot support this. So... Thank you guys so much. I will be back in my next video that is hopefully a little bit more cheerful and a little bit less serious. I did work on a little commission during this of this little purple witch, so I hope you enjoyed watching that during all this drama. I love you guys so much, and as always, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.